Chad. How are you? I'm good, Courtney. How are you? I'm doing great. So why don't you go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Sure thing. Well, I've been in credit union since 2006 and gosh, there's so much to say. I'll try to boil this down. You tell me if I'm right or wrong. Okay. Um, I started out at the Wisconsin Credit Union League and have had a fantastic career in credit unions, working at all kinds of places inside a credit union. I was once at Filing Research Institute myself. Um, I also was part of the first crash um, group at GAC. So a lot of proud moments. Right now I work at the National Credit Union Foundation leading our development educator program. So um, all things considered, I know it's a crazy time, but I, I love my job, I love what I'm doing and happy to be here with you today. So um, for everyone watching on the stream, I am um, doing my best to um, read Courtney's lips as we work through some audio issues. So just trying to be totally vulnerable here. I've been talking about empathy and vulnerability the past couple of weeks as we've been doing a lot of work in that area. So um, we're working on that right now, but I do know that um, what we had planned to talk about um, to, to start is this idea of community leadership and what that is. Um, the quick definition of that is it's having empathy for the people around you, understanding the challenges they're facing, and then acting to solve those challenges. So um, there's a lot of pieces to pick apart there, but the end result is really knowing who you're serving. And that's a simple thing to say, but it's not always easy to do. Um, in credit union land, we are looking at um, data all the time, whether it's our member data, whether it's outside research to make informed decisions about our members in addition to um, member feedback, right? What's going on in our community? Anecdotally, what are we hearing? Um, the leadership part comes into play when we understand what we do with those um, what we do with those insights, what we do with what's going on in our members' lives and figuring out as a credit union or as an individual who works in a credit union or maybe a team, what can we do about those things? So um, it's, it's really, uh, <laughs> yeah, again, there's a lot of directions we could go here. I think the other interesting thing to think about is um, what do I mean by community? When we say community leadership, what exactly does that mean? Um, if I asked 100 people, um, what community means to them and get a hundred different definitions, right? So in credit unions, um, we'd be hearing from somebody, um, Courtney, are you, am I coming through? I'm just continuing to ramble in the meantime, as we figure out our, I can hear you. I'm sorry. Do you want me to just go? Okay, I'll give you one second. I'm going to finish up this thought though that I had and then we can circle back around because I hope we've got people still listening. Look, Courtney and I were just talking about this too uh, in advance of uh, this webinar. Um, as we've all moved to digital channels and things like that, um, it's been tough, right? There's challenges and, and we're facing one of those right now. So I hope you'll practice a little vulnerability back. But I do want to thought about um, what it means because when we're talking about this 
in a credit union sense, it could be field of membership. It could be, um, we could be thinking more personally with the neighborhoods we live in, um, the people who live on my street or block or my apartment complex, um, what nonprofits and charities and businesses exist in my community. So you could look at it a lot of different ways. The problem with thinking about community leadership is that we sometimes get overwhelmed, right? With the definitions and kind of thinking about not just, you know, what does that mean, but also how can we make something happen? Um, I love this quote by Drew Dudley. Um, he's a, a, an author and he's a professional speaker and um, we were looking to do some work with him in the future here. But uh, one of the things he likes to say is um, we've made uh, changing the world about, you know, changing 6 billion lives and there is no world. There's just 6 billion understandings of this world. So um, it sounds a little hokey, but the ability to change somebody's life or impact community in a way that we feel makes an impact um, is something that, um, you know, can feel overwhelming, but really it's about looking at one person or a group of people and saying, what can I do? Um, so just uh, waiting for, um, <laughs> Courtney just told me to, to keep going. I'm going to rock this, okay? Because there, there's not the, uh, the, the train of thought here um, when it comes to kind of making a difference, um, understanding who that community is that you're serving, um, and just to circle around to that thought, kind of sometimes feeling overwhelmed, and just to reiterate, um, feeling like, you know, can I make an impact? That's a question that um, I think all of us are asking right now um, as we think about, uh, you know, who we're serving, and more in particular, what the COVID-19 pandemic has done to us with regard to how we're serving people. Um, I've talked with a lot of um, credit union leaders who work in community development and, um, and a lot who don't, but the community development folks um, have really gotten their world shook up because the idea of serving our communities in a time of social distancing and um, some of the challenges that stay at home policies and everything else going on right now um, has, has, has changed for us in terms of how we think of community development as credit unions. So, um, Courtney, I think I've got volume. Can you hear me? I can totally hear you. <gasps> That's so exciting. You know Thank what? You. We, <laughs> I don't know if we, we, we lost people during that time or if we gained Maybe. people. We were like, look at the, look at the Chad and Courtney train wreck. Can you see the sweat beads coming down his head oh as he gosh. struggles to just try to keep a tangent line of thought? I Chad, love you're great. Talking, <laughs> I love talking to you more than myself. I felt like I was just like, is anybody there? Oh my gosh. No, you were fantastic. And I was like over here nodding my head. I was like, yes, this is great. Keep going. And like, let's talk more about this, but now we can. So this is fantastic. And whether we lost people or not, whatever we're we can gain more people they can watch later and we can still yes. get a little give them little nuggets so that's perfect and what a fun way to show them a little <laughs> flexibility that's right we're working on the fly too everybody. <laughs> um yeah so i just i'm sorry i totally interrupted you but i was super interested to hear you finish your thought so if you remember <laughs> remember where you were going with that please <laughs> move forward well uh, in that rambling, I think the, the big things I want to just circle back to is that this idea of community leadership is is really practicing empathy. And, and empathy, we've, uh, we've been talking about empathy a lot. I think I used to think of empathy as a destination, right? We want to be empathetic as credit unions. We need to practice more empathy. That's just part of the story. Empathy is really a doorway to creating action. And this word called compassion, which is a little scary to mention credit union land because um, you know, compassion's soft and, you know, is that, you know, uh, the side of our business that we, we, we can't really cling our hands to and understand it's, it's, you know, living our mission, whatever, those things are really tangible and, and acting with compassion out of empathy is, is really important. We can talk more about that, but I think having empathy for the people around you and then understanding what community means to you, it means a yeah. lot of things to a lot of different people. And um, that digs into some other topics we can talk about too. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's one, it's super important for us to think, um, at least for me to think of empathy and compassion as as two sort of separate things. But, 
if you have one, it can lead to the other. And if you think about the credit unions that really live this like empathetic model, um, I think some of these are the ones that are really doing the best and have some of the most loyal members because they know they can call and feel not just the empathy, but also the compassion behind the service that they're getting when they pick up the phone. Um, but as, even outside of that, right? Like, mm -hmm. how are you doing right now? Like, you are part of my credit union community. And I think that that's something that's super important to, to mention. You know, we kind of touched on this. It's not just members. Um, our communities, our families, and our friends. So, you know, how, how are we showing up for those folks right now? I think that is another really interesting topic. I love um, asking people right now, how are you doing? And then asking, because everyone gives a fake answer to that, right? I'm yeah. good, thanks. I'm good. <laughs> and then you just move on, right, with life. Right. But then saying, no, wait, really, how, how are you doing? And the conversation that usually follows after that is really um, an important one to have with people right now. So I appreciate you asking me that. Um, you know, I think I'm like a lot of people right now where I feel like I've got it fairly good or better than others. And... Um, and this is a, tell me if you resonate with this. Um, there are still things I miss. There are things that I wish I could do, but I also feel guilty about those things because I know it could be way worse and that people out there are really struggling right now. So I almost feel like, oh, you know, I shouldn't even be complaining because I've got it good. I've I still had my job, thankfully, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I've got access to food and all these things that people are struggling with. But at the same time, I think that doesn't allow us to understand that all of us are going through some level of grieving right now. Loss is grieving, right? Um, mm -hmm. And how, how we're managing that ourselves. So I think that question you asked, I, I am doing pretty good. Thanks for asking. Because um, I've, I've been just kind of shoulders deep in this kind of um, understanding what grief is like right now for people and how to cope with loss mm -hmm. and reflecting that on myself. And I think more people thinking truly of how are you doing, we're so busy, right, taking care of um, the, the, the customers and the members we have, we're so busy taking care of our families and, and checking in with the, you know, the people who are counting on us. And at the same time, we're not checking in with ourselves. So, mm -hmm. um, so you might, when you ask that question, you might get a, I don't know, I haven't had time to slow down and think about it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's so true. And it's, it's interesting because I've also noticed that people are starting to be more comfortable with that level of vulnerability where maybe before, um, they may not have been as comfortable. And it's interesting, some of the thoughts, I yes, all of what you said have resonated. I feel grateful that I have a job. I feel grateful that I'm not living alone I and have my partner, um, you know, all of these things. And then there's also these other things that start to come into play, right? Like, I'm grateful that I have food. I have, I'm grateful that I can be preventative and take preventative health precautions that I know some people may yeah. not be able to take. Um, you know, just thinking about like, and I don't know this, if this is just me, but just thinking about walking into a grocery store with a mask on, like I'm a white female, like I can do that. Is that something that everyone feels safe even doing? And here we are asking everybody to cover their face. And for so long, that's been something where people of color have not been traditionally able to do that. And are we taking that for granted? And people look at me like, that's crazy. Why would you think that? And I'm like, I don't know. Like, should I be thinking about that? Is that something that's going through other people's minds that we aren't really talking about? So um, anyway. The, there was, um, and along these lines, because you're absolutely right, in thinking about the populations that are especially being impacted by this, I've been reminded a few times in the past week or so about people with disabilities um, and elderly, um, people who are in nursing homes, um, mm -hmm isolated, right? Um, I had a credit union leader reflecting on the situation and talking to me about how, you know, they, they thought that was in their best interest, right? And that's kind of where the thought process ended for them at the time. And it's nothing against them, but it's just, you know, the elderly are in the nursing homes and they're safe there. Uh, not and then upon further reflection, thinking mm -hmm. of the isolation and, you know, at end of life, the, the care and, and human connection they need, right? Yeah. Um, but then the people with disabilities too, um, a gentleman shared with me, um, you know, he's hard of hearing and um, people wearing masks. Um, it's, you know, you, you rely on lip reading and it's a frustrating thing for him um, to, to deal with people now because he can't read their lips. So it's harder for him to understand and harder to communicate. And so... 
it's easy to kind of think about those things as one-offs, but when you start yeah. thinking about the bigger audience and practicing that, you're like, oh my God, there's so many people that, you know, I, I can I can envision people who have it rougher than me. And then there's probably a thousand other situations where I don't even understand. And yeah. I want to, because that, that helps us as people who work in credit unions. Definitely. And so just kind of bring this back to action. You know, you think about like these different populations that we've spoke of. Are there things that you've seen credit unions doing right now that are really making an impact or maybe not even credit unions, just individuals that you're like, man, these people are like really just showing up for their community right now in amazing ways. Yeah, I um, so I think what Filene has done and what Kuna has done is a great job of collecting some of those examples. Um, I think there's credit unions all over. And what the coolest thing about this, Courtney, for me, is seeing the patterns, right? There was no one shouting from the mountaintop to say, credit unions must do this and this and this. You saw so many credit unions without connecting. It's kind of like a fish moving in a school or something like mm-hmm. that, or birds, like uh, the murmurations are, uh, they acting out of instinct, out of really what our mission is. It's saying our members are hurting, so let's look at how we can provide them affordable, um, small, short-term credit. Um, Let's look at how we can waive fees or make life easier for them right now because everything else is hard. And we've got a little flexibility here in our business to do that. So I think, not to dodge your question, but I think the pattern is what gets to me is that, oh my gosh, our mission, our cooperative principles really do matter. It's not mm-hmm. just fluff or things we put on the wall. You're seeing credit unions all over live those things. And um, I, I think some of the most creative stuff that I've heard is I think the real personal individual experiences. I think, yeah. you know, I, I mentioned the nursing homes, uh, credit union um, employees reaching out to those members. It's it's not the, the fancy stuff all the time. It's the little things that count. Yeah. Um, I spoke with a credit union today that is moving forward with um, volunteer income tax assistance, uh, GECU in Texas is doing this. Um, despite you know social distancing and everything, there's a yeah. need to see people in person and prove identity. So they've gotten really creative about working around that. And um, so I think you see this ingenuity and innovation and it's hard to say like, here's the three things I see. But, right. <laughs> but what I see is this, this pattern that speaks to, yeah, you're damn right we're credit unions and right now it's tough, but we're stepping up and uh, that's that's awesome to watch. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's super that's super cool to hear. Um, and you know, to the to your point of the human connection, some of the things that I've been hearing from crashers that I've really loved it just in some of these um, virtual happy hours that we've been doing is a lot of them have been doing handwritten notes as people go through the drive through, um, and you know, hopefully, I'm sure they're all keeping it very clean and sanitary. Um, and at the end of the day, sometimes this is like the only connection that people get. And they're getting like, the people that are doing this are getting wild responses from members just saying thank you. Like, thank you for saying hi to me. Thanks for asking how I'm doing. Just, it's just really great to, again, prove that that human, that people helping people thing, that connection still really matters so, so much. Um, and you're right, there really isn't one there isn't really one thing that I've heard. It is just a collection of of different things that people are doing to really, really come together, which is so exciting. Um, so I do want to give you a to, few moments, though. If, if, oh, if you had any final thoughts, please go. Sure. Yeah. To that point, um, that last one, I, I'm so glad to hear you say that. Um, first off, uh, Crash Happy Hours, why haven't I been invited? I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> I haven't heard of this. So we'll address that later, hopefully. Yes. Sorry. The second thing is um, the unspoken heroic acts in credit unions. You're absolutely right. And I think that's the that's the message right now is that when we think about community leadership, and, and we talked a little bit about, you know, you could think of it as your family and then your 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 tribe or however you mm-hmm. want to define it. And then you, kind of this broader community and then the world. You know, right now it's so hard. Things are moving so fast. What can I do to help people right now? And it's it's changing one person's life. It's writing that handwritten note to one person who maybe has been isolated for weeks at a time and they're not yeah. connected with anyone. And sometimes we can't see those scars, right? Yep. We can't see the impact and, and all of the things within you know mental health and all the things that are being worsened right now with the situation. But I would say it doesn't matter where you are in the chain of command in a credit union. It doesn't matter how much influence you have over this, or even if you're connected with the community right now, it's about helping one person and that, that person, you don't know how much they need that on that day. And, and if we do that a couple of times, and if we all do that, that's, 
that's how you change the world. Um, and it's, it's a big thing to think about, but starting small and just helping one person saying, no, really, how are you yeah. is, is how we make an impact right now. So I, uh, I, I just encourage everyone, you know, I, I try to challenge myself. Um, and I'm going to do this more actually, because I think I've kind of fell off the, you know, I'm focused everywhere, but how, how can I help someone today? Just one person yeah. in some small way. Um, and I challenge everyone to think that way, um, as we all move through this adversity and try to tackle everything that's so real. And so, um, yeah. you know, oh. well, <laughs> I don't know if I can say that any better, so I'm just going to leave that at that. Cause that was beautiful and 100% accurate, you're welcome. Um, and well, I too and I, I, will do that. Like I, I'm, I am gonna make an effort to do one nice thing for someone every day, which hopefully I'm already doing that, but like consciously, like really, really trying. Well, you're doing that here. I appreciate you connecting with me. So <laughs> you, you, you filled your check the box for the day. And it's so much nicer to talk with you um, instead of just myself and you know at the beginning of the feed, I was just I'm so embarrassed about whatever I said there so no. oh, um gosh. so I just would ask everyone um to know that uh you know Courtney and I the conversation we did have I really appreciate and um hopefully we can do it again sometime oh my gosh absolutely well Chad thank you again for coming on the show um if you have any questions about Empathy School, DE anything related to finding your why food deserts all that good stuff that is Chad's wheelhouse. So please feel free to reach out to Chad. I don't have his email address up on the screen, but I'm sure you can find him on LinkedIn, Twitter, and all over the internet. So thank you so much, Chad, for being here. I definitely appreciate it. And we're just going to go ahead and finish off the show now um, with a one. Thank you for tuning in. We love this, that uh, we can, one, bring in awesome guests, and two, provide you with some really actionable ways that you can build a solid foundation of leadership as you move through your journey uh, with credit unions. Next Wednesday, excuse me, the Wednesday after next, May 20th, we will have our next show. We have a very special guest, um, Julia Bracco Yates. She is a licensed psychologist with the University of Wisconsin, and she actually is a psychologist for doctors and healthcare workers. Super timely. So we will be chatting with her in the next couple weeks um, to provide you all with some super actionable ways that you can help cope with stress, not only for yourself, but maybe some really cool takeaways that you can help um, your members as well. So so thank you again for tuning in. We will see you on May 20th.